Hi guys, welcome to our section, how to find vertical asymptotes and holes in a rational function. Let's do it. So first, let's find out what is a rational function and a vertical asymptote. Anytime you have a function where you have the variable in the denominator, you will have what we call a vertical asymptote. So look what's going to happen. I have x equals 0 here because when I want to find the vertical asymptotes, I just grab whatever I have in the denominator and make it equals to 0. Here I can see when I graph the function that when I do x equals 0, this is actually what we call a vertical asymptote because the function is going to get really, really close to it, but it will never touch it. So let's do another example. And look what's happening here. The first step that I want to figure it out is my vertical asymptote. So I'm going to grab what I have here and make it equals to 0. So I do x minus 3 equals to 0, and then I have x equals 3. When I graph this, look what happens. I go 1, 2, 3, and then there I'm going to actually just go ahead and build a line. Now, the vertical asymptotes are very important when we have rational functions because, believe it or not, they're going to help you determine where the function is going. For example, if I did not have a calculator, I could just go ahead and do the vertical asymptote and then start plugging points that are greater than 3 and below 3, and that will actually help me get the shape of the curve. Let's do another example a little bit more complicated. Look what happens here. I have x squared minus 2x minus 15. Well, I'm going to grab the bottom, make it equals to 0. Here I have x squared minus 2x minus 15. So I need to go ahead and factor because I need to figure out the values that make the denominators equals to 0. And look, x minus 5 equals 0, x equals 5. This is actually one vertical asymptote. And then the other one is going to be x plus 3 equals 0, and that's equals to x equals to negative 3. When I do the graph, bingo, my asymptotes are right here. Look, 1, 2, 3, so here I have a vertical asymptote. And then I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 another vertical asymptote. As you can see here, the line gets very, very close, but it never touches it. Now, sometimes you're going to have what we call holes. And look what happens. Here I have f of x equals x plus 1 over x squared minus 1. I go ahead and I say, wait a second, I can actually rewrite this function at, like this. The top is going to be x plus 1. And then the bottom is going to be x plus 1 times x minus 1. Now here, be very careful. You can go ahead and say, oh, my vertical asymptote is, remember, we need to make this 2 equals to 0, x equals negative 1, and x equals 1. But look what's happening. This guy here is actually go, going to go away. So look what's going to happen. I'm going to have 1 over x minus 1. That means that my vertical asymptote is going to be x equals to 1, because remember, x minus 1 equals 0 is going to give me x equals to 1. So what happens with this x plus 1? Well, what's going to happen is that I'm going to have a hole into the function. So look what happens. I grab that value, okay, after I eliminate my variable, and look, I just make it equals to 0. So I get that my hole is equals to negative 1. You actually, have to, you actually have to plug this negative 1 into this function to figure it out the value of y. So I do 1 over negative 1 minus 1, and you get negative 1 half. And let's see how this works. As you can see here, the vertical asymptote was x equals 1. Remember, that's the one that never goes away. So that is this line. And then you're going to have a hole when negative 1, negative 1 half, which is actually uh, around here. So you can just go ahead and do like a little bubble, and you'll see that in your graph, that is actually a point that is not in the function. Conclusion, when you have something like this, just make your, um, always make sure that you factor whatever you need to factor, get rid of whatever you can, 
and then make sure that you understand the difference between a vertical asymptote and a hole into the function. Let's do one more example. We have x squared minus 4 over x squared minus x minus 6. Now look what happens here. I can go ahead and factor the top and the bottom. Well, remember, whatever goes away is going to become the whole. Whatever does not go away, in this case x minus 3 equals 0, is actually going to be what we call the vertical asymptote. So vertical asymptote in this case is going to be x equals 3, right? And my whole is going to be, remember, since I eliminated plus 2, I make it equal to 0, and that's actually negative 2. And then I can plug the negative 2 into the one that I have cleaned before. And look, let's graph it, and look what's going to happen. x equals 3 is going to be the vertical asymptote right here. And then I'm going to have a hole in negative 2, comma, 4 fifth. So I go to negative 2, which is right here, and right here I'm going to have a hole. And that's it. Thank you so much for watching our videos. Please, forget, please don't forget to watch our other videos. And also, thanks so much for learning.